Christ. Let's turn our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Everybody got it? If you don't got it, say, wait for me. Don't be, don't be nervous. <laughs> there you go. Ezekiel chapter 37. It's right after Jeremiah. All right, if you got it, stand on your feet with me. If you don't got it, stand on your feet with me. <laughs> Tonight, we are going to step into a concept and a valuable God teaching that this specific room has never stepped into. So tonight we're going to get in deep water. Everybody say deep water. Deep water. Okay. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 37 says this. The Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with dry bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere, everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say dry bones Listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to put breath into you. Everybody say breath. breath. And make you live again. I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with, this, with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. We're going to walk through this entire chapter of 10 verses but um or 14 verses but we're gonna we're gonna stop right here and pray thank you lord for this day we love you and appreciate you god we thank you for the absolutely amazing revolution revelation that you're going to give us tonight so god let not our hearts be backward or bashful but let our hearts set on fire and be bold to step into what is to come tonight and we give your name the honor glory and praise and everybody said amen, amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so I'm, I think I'm going to say this every time I preach. The Bible is good if you what? <laughs> if you read it. It's not good if it only sits on your shelf or if it's a book, it's on your bookcase to make your bookcase look nice on your Instagram videos. It has to be an active thing in your life, right? The Bible is good if you read it. Tonight, I want us to sit, listen, partake, and activate something that is going on in this chapter. But it poses a question that I want us to sit with tonight. The question is, can this live? Can this live? Can this situation, can this relationship, can this live? Okay. The first thing we're going to sit with now, I'm just going to warn y'all right now. I'm in a very teachy mood, but I, f I could quickly get into preachy, but I really want to teach. Okay. Is that cool? Okay. So take notes, take notes, take notes. Take notes, <laughs> take notes, okay? First thing, what is the breath of God? What is the breath of God? What is this amazing, cool thing that we sing about in songs, the breath of God? What is it? Well, the word ruach is the Hebrew word for breath of God or essence that sustains life. The first recorded use of the breath of God we find in Genesis chapter 2. 
The Bible says in verse seven of Genesis chapter two, then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils and the man became a living person. This is the first instance in time where we hear about the breath of God. So with that observation, what do we see? The first thing we see, write this down. The main purpose of the breath of God is to bring life. The main purpose of the breath of God is to bring life. It's your breath in our lungs, so we. Okay. I can't breathe until you breathe, so. Okay. It is in every song, but it's just a song if we don't know the history behind the breath of God. How can we experience Ruach if we do not understand Ruach? Okay. All things point back to the breath of God, which is significantly used to produce life. The other thing the breath of God is used for, write down, the breath of God is also a variation of the Holy Spirit. The breath of God is also a variation of of the Holy Spirit. Prove it. Got you. Acts chapter two. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. The breath of God, the wind of God, the Ruach of God. It can not only give life into you, but it can be like wind. Okay. Y'all tracking with me? This is where I want us to really dive into, because here's the thing, just reading the Bible is not good enough. Read the Bible and start building off some, some, you know how people make a movie and then they make spinoffs of that movie? Take the Bible and make a spinoff class out of that. Be like, you know what? I know what it says right here, but what does it mean in the Greek? What does it say in the NIV? I know what it says in, get nerdy. Everybody say get nerdy. (laughs) Okay. Because, because. The Holy Spirit is a variation of the breath of God because the Holy Spirit is a part of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He possesses many qualities of the Godhead. What am I trying to say? The Holy Spirit brings new life in Christ and it also brings a wind of God. When we say blow, wind, blow in in, uh, church, we don't mean open the window, let a breeze in. We're saying Holy Spirit blow through here, change us and give us new life life. The Holy Spirit has the anatomy of the Godhead. Now, the anatomy, everybody say anatomy. Anatomy. Let's go into natural practical process of anatomy. When we are produced in our mother's womb, babies receive oxygen. Everybody say oxygen. oxygen. But where do they receive breath oxygen from? The placenta. The placenta's main functions for the fetus are listed. Listen to this. The main functions of the placenta are protection for the fetus, nutrition for the fetus, respiration for the fetus, and hormone production. The placenta carries the characteristics and the health of the host. If the mother is, the child can only get what the mother puts in, and the placenta speaks on behalf of the host. Are y'all tracking with me? The host is the supplier of the needs to the child, but it releases its substance through the placenta. The placenta only operates on behalf of the effort of the host. What am I saying? The Holy Spirit is our spiritual placenta. Blasphemy. No, it's not. We're about to go to the Bible in a minute and you're going to be mad. (laughs) He is, he, he is a spiritual, the Holy Spirit is a spiritual placenta. How do I explain this? We are his children. We are God's children. His offspring is another way to say that word. He sent his son, the son sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an entity that provides as listed, protection, nutrition, respiration, the breath of God, AKA new life, and hormone production, production of hormones to help you grow, AKA the fruits of the spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit produces in us. We are God's offspring. Everybody say offspring. And God is the host who we live in and who we have our mean and movement in, okay? Now, 
What did I not say? God is not a woman. Don't go out of here saying Pastor Lincoln told you God is a woman. No, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. He's not a horoscope. He ain't a woman. He's a spirit. Okay? And the spirit, we live within him. And God sent his Holy Spirit, a part of the Godhead, to us because we are his offspring. What am I saying? Y'all said I was blaspheming earlier. Let's go to Acts chapter 17. Listen to this. Acts chapter 17 tells us this in verse 24. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives life and breath and everything else. For in him we live and for in him we live and move like a fetus and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. We are God's children. We get the benefits of the host when we live in him. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? I am a child of God and the Holy Spirit gives me his fruits because the Holy Spirit is the spiritual placenta that only speaks and moves on behalf of the host who is God. We are God's offspring. And since we are from him and we move and have our being in him because he has marked us with his breath. His breath. This is what it means to have breath the breath of God in you. This is what it means to carry his spirit. When, when the Holy Spirit fell on the people in the upper room, the Bible says that they were filled, not with wind that was blowing through the air. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, which is the breath of God. Are y'all educated with me tonight? But that's not the question tonight. The question tonight is not, what is the breath of God? The question is, based off of my situation, can this live? Can what I'm going through, can what's stressing me out, can what's killing me, can this live? I have to ask myself, well, first of all, what am I asking God to put his breath on? This is where it gets ugly. We have to ask questions like, is it dead? Is it dry? And really, should it stay that way? Is that relationship, is it dead, is it dry, should it stay that way? Uh Uh-huh, this is where I thought y'all would get quiet, and y'all are. (laughs) Is that that thing that I desire, is that, is my selfish ambition, is it dry, is it dead, and should it stay that way? Because... The breath of God gives life. And would I want God to breathe into something that he meant to be dead? (laughs) Uh Do I want God to really revive something that I've struggled with? But because but because it kept me, it gave me friendships that were also toxic because it gave me relationships that were also toxic. At least I had friends. So do I want God to breathe on something just to make me feel better? Or do I want God to let whatever is dead be dead? And in this conundrum of questioning, we find ourselves sitting at the location of our text tonight, which is Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. The two observations we have to look at in Ezekiel 37. Let's look at verse two, Ezekiel 37. You should still be there. He led me all around among the bones that covered the floor, the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Everybody say say completely Completely. dried Dried. out. Out. One more time. Completely Completely. dried Dried. out. The situation is completely dried out. My bank account is completely dried out. My patience is completely dried out. There is no water. There is no life. There is no hope. 
and a matter of fact, the space I'm in is absent of the substance that I need. The space I'm residing in is absent, missing the very substance that I need. Verse three says, then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? So the question is, can this live or is it too far gone? Better question is, am I too far gone? See, we focus too much on our situation. We don't focus on ourselves sometimes. We say, God, come and breathe on this when it should be God, come and breathe on me. Because if you take care of me, I can work on this. <laughs> Am I too far gone? Does God still see me? Can I recover? And look what God tells him in verse four. This is so good. This is so good. This is so good. This is so good. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look. I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. What, it, what, it, what are we reading? First and foremost, he told him to do something so specific. He told him to prophesy. Uh-huh. The word prophecy in the Greek is propheteia. It's a combination of the words pro, which means forth, and femi, which means to speak. If you're going to prophesy, God told him to prophesy. Notice he did not tell him manifest it. Notice he did not tell him speak it into existence. Notice he did not use the language of name it, claim it. I'm going to sit here for a second. We do really good at manifesting things, speaking them into existence, and we don't prophesy at all. At all. <laughs> I just want a nice, real good, blah, 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 man, job, woman, this, that, and the third. So I'm going to speak it into existence. Can I tell you what you're actually doing? Witchcraft. <laughs> Do y'all know what witchcraft is? Yeah. It's not potions, even though they include that. <laughs> it's not the Wicked Witch of the West. It's your friend Erica at your job. It's your friend um, Dino at your job. I hope there's no Marcuses and, G and Dinos in here. <laughs> I'm just trying to describe to you, you are around a bunch of people who are telling you to manifest something where they don't have the power to do <laughs> and neither do you okay when you try to manifest something you are practicing in the occult you are practicing and declaring witchcraft you are saying i'm going to manifest something mainly because i really don't want to work for it i really just want it to show up hocus pocus <laughs> i want to do abracadabra and it show up I don't want to do what the Bible say. I don't want to do no long suffering. I don't want to fast. I definitely don't want to pray because I really don't know how to talk to God. I really know how to talk to my horoscope and myself and my intuition more than I do talk to God, even though that's the person who gave it to me. But I'm just saying we want to manifest things because manifestation is sexy right now. Uh-huh. We can manifest the mate. M-O-M. I'm going to manifest that that he shows up just at the same time when I get to work. Okay, you know what that's called? A spell. <laughs> I'm gonna cast a spell so we meet at the right place and the right time. I know, y'all like, no, Pastor Lincoln, it's not that deep. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. You and Erica at the desk, manifesting. <laughs> When in reality, you don't need to manifest stuff. You need discipline. You need to know how to work a checkbook. You need to know how to have a savings. You need to know how to say, I'm going to put my money aside. You need to know, you need to learn how to say, you know what? Whatever I'm trying to attract, 
I don't even have the capacity to receive. One, I'm not like that person, so why would that person come and look for me? Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. But we want to manifest. Harry Potter. <laughs> come on. So, <laughs> some of y'all driving the car lot saying, in the name of Jesus, and your credit is a 625. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> for those of y'all don't know about credit, not good. Stop manifesting and ask God to teach you how to prophesy. Yeah. Uh-huh. He told him to speak a prophetic word over these dry bones. The source is just as important as the destination. Mm -hmm. The source you are pulling from is just as important as the thing you asking him to lead you to. If you want God to lead you to something, you got to ask God. <laughs> If you want your flesh to lead you to something, you don't need to have no conversation, you don't need to have no meetings. Just go do it. <laughs> That's the easy one. It's so easy to manifest. It used to be called name it, claim it. Now we didn't give it something sexier. I'm going to speak it into existence. I'm going to manifest it. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't Disney, and you not sleeping beauty. <laughs> you ugly. <laughs> Ugly. <laughs> now watch, everybody can be like, Pastor Lee called me ugly. <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> and I ain't coming back. <laughs> the source is just as, important, just as important as the destination. Whatever source I'm pulling from is going to be the thing that directs me. It's going to give me insight. It's going to give me information on how to retrieve those things. You do know wickedness can teach you how to get, go get things wickedness. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Things that are wicked will give you instruction and information on how to go retrieve things in a wicked fashion. Mm -hmm. So my question is, whom are you speaking from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> whom are you speaking from? Jesus used to ask the people who were demon possessed, who is you? And they'd be like, I'm legion, for we are many. <laughs> it's just as important as where you are speaking to. You got to, prophecy isn't prophesying until it matches the spirit of the source that you got it from. Yeah. Prophecy, this, now, now let me get real, real on a horse and buck. We have a lot of people in church prophesying but it's coming from them okay now i feel them because the source is just as important as the destination if all i do is tell you i prophesy uh-huh well who's it on behalf of i because remember the holy spirit can't speak on his own behalf he speaks on behalf of the son and the son speaks on behalf of the father so if you are speaking from a place of you, well, who's backing you? Your, your flesh? Your selfish desire? Who, who's breathing on your behalf? And whatever you're breathing on me, who's it coming from? This is why I don't let people pray over me all the time, unless I know they are a vetted resource. Y'all just be like, come pray for me because I'm broken. How about you go get fixed up a little bit? Now, this is where people get offended. I'm going to tell y'all something. Lean in. Just do one. Lean in, okay? You do know you can read your Bible, too. <laughs> you don't have to gas up your car and travel around the city to go find a word because you heard somebody in town that you don't have no relationship with. Going to seminar after seminar, talking about, I'm just here to get a word. You do know they make these. Now, this one is thick because that's that's what I wanted. <laughs> but they make them thinner than this. They put them in your phone. They send you notification. You can even get the, the Bible broken down in just chapters and you can do a study on it. <laughs> the problem is. This source ain't sexy enough. <laughs> <laughs> this source requires us to read it. 
where we would like somebody else to read us and tell us what to do. That's divination. It's called a psychic. <laughs> I'm slaying some cows today. I brought a cleaver. <laughs> I brought a cleaver. <laughs> It's so important that we stop depending on man for a word and we start asking God for a word and we ask him to breathe on us. God, breathe on me a fresh word. Help. If there is a prophecy, if there is something you want me to say, you say it and direct me how to say it. Uh huh. But we have too many people wanting to be important so they will get up and prophesy on behalf of God. And God says, I didn't say that. And then worse, we have people living out their lives according to this phony baloney prophecy. And they find themselves walking in turmoil when they should be walking in obedience to God. But how can they be obedient to somebody who is not obedient themselves, who told them this is what you should be doing? God told me to tell you, uh uh. I don't see none of your history where that has come forth for anybody else. But yet I gave you an offering. <laughs> Yeah, we lining false prophets' pockets instead of going to literally the source. Now, what am I not saying? I'm not saying don't go listen to your favorite worship team. Go listen to Elevation. Go, go to the concerts, all that stuff. But if you need Elevation and that atmosphere to get you into worship... What are we talking about? I'm not saying don't, don't go listen to your favorite preacher, your favorite teacher, your favorite whatever it is. But if them the only people that give you the word, what are we doing? You need to have the skill and the anointing to be able to prophesy over your own stuff. Because don't nobody know your situation better than you. So who better to prophesy to the thing that you are asking, can this live? Y'all with me? Prophecy is not prophecy until it matches the spirit of the source you got it from. There's a commercial, I love this commercial. There's a Honda commercial. And in the Honda commercial, he lists off this thing and it's a poem that it reads in, in the straight way it reads as failure. But when you read it in reverse, it's a victory, okay? It's a Honda commercial. Now, I wrote out for us something like this Honda commercial because this is how we go through things. I'm going to teach you how to complain and then I'm going to teach you how to prophesy. OK, listen, this is what the poem was like. It was I believe that this can't live. This is the last time I will see the goodness of God. My doubts will destroy my faith. The more I trust God, the more I cry. I want to be free, but not today. This is where I give up. Now that is complaining and conceding to what's going on to us. That is saying this can't live. But when you activate the breath of God in you, you can start to prophesy what he's telling you. Now let's read it in reverse. This is where I give up, but not today. I want to be free. The more I cry, the more I trust God. My faith will destroy my doubts. I will see the goodness of God. This is the last time I believe that this can't live. That's prophesying now. That's saying I'm going to speak against how I feel and prophesy what God tells me to say. This is so good and y'all looking at me crazy. It's right. Because we do so good at complaining, but we don't have enough God in us, enough breath of him to speak against that stuff we complaining about. Y'all tracking with me? Listen, the Bible says this. It says in this in the scripture reading, it says, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones. Listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. What's about to happen is not by human might, nor the words of flesh, but by the power of the word of God and God himself. This is what God said to speak. Listen to this. Look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you 
live again. Verse six, verse six says, I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in to you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. But let's look at verse seven. Everybody at verse seven, Ezekiel, verse seven. Look, look, look. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. And then verse eight says something. Then I watched. Stop. I spoke. Then I watched. I was obedient in speaking what God told me to say. But then I got to see what am I saying? When you line up and stay in alignment with God and he tells you to speak something, he tells you to prophesy over something, you get to see it too. Yeah. You may not get to see it on this side of heaven, but there is a side where you will get to see it. What I want to show to you is that the prophet Ezekiel spoke first. OK, now this is where it can get real tricky. I'm going to speak it into existence. Uh -uh. I'm going to speak what God tells me to say. If God tells me to say, let it die, guess what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. That's what we don't like to do because most of the things that God tells us to let die is the stuff that we hold on to dear life for. Jesus. But God's saying, and the other thing, that, the other reason why we don't want to let go is because if God tells us to do something and say, God, I don't know about that. I, I just feel like I won't be around long enough to see it. I feel like I won't get to see the goodness of God. I feel like I won't get to see me in that house. I feel like I won't get to see me walking down the aisle, this, that, and the third, having uh, financial freedom. I, Lord, I feel like I won't get to see it if I follow you. So I would rather go to somebody who can give me some quick uh, check in the cash type of spiritual stuff, which is a soothsayer, a psychic. Wow. Help me now. I don't got to wait. <laughs> give me one of these stones to rub and let's ride. Yeah. Yeah. Psychics are just as bad as checking the cash places. <laughs> they on every corner and they charge big. <laughs> that was the Holy Ghost. That wasn't even in my notes. OK, let's go to verse eight. Ooh. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed over their bodies. But they still had no breath. I prophesied on behalf of God. I got to see what I prophesied come to life, but something is missing. I prayed. I wrote it in my journal. I fasted. I'm seeing something, but, but something ain't right. Tell your neighbor, something ain't right. What's not right is you may have the word on the situation, but you also need the breath. <laughs> you can't have my word, God says, without my breath. <laughs> my word speaks life, but my breath brings life. You can speak the word, but until you call on my breath, to breathe life into what you're speaking to, then it's just words. What am I saying? When you are speaking scripture, when you're saying things over your life, when you're saying things over your family, you can't just say the words. You have to invite somebody into those words. And that somebody you're inviting is the Holy Spirit, which is a variation of the breath of God. You need the breath of God in your situation. You need the breath of God to make those dry things live, live again. You don't get the breath of God if you don't call on it. Okay? Why? Prove it. Got you. Verse 9. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to who? To where? To the breath. To the winds. Son of man, speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Bra breathe into these dead bodies 
so they may live again. Breathe into this situation so it may live again. Breathe into my marriage so it'll breathe again. Breathe into my children so it'll breathe again. Breathe into my mind because there's some things going on in there. Breathe in them so I can live again. This is my frustration. I lived a portion of my life speaking all the right things, but they had no breath. They sounded good. They looked good on paper. They looked even good on t-shirts and in songs, but there was no breath in them. There was no substance to make what was on the page leap off the page and live in me. They were just things that I memorized in Sunday school, but they had no breath. They didn't have any breath. And sometimes we get caught up in what we are saying rather than who we are inviting. You can't just pray over your daughter's room, your son's room, your room, and walk away, be like, God, in the name of Jesus, do. No, no, no. Holy Spirit, meet me here. Meet my daughter, meet my son, meet my situation here. Breathe on this. Holy Spirit, be here because I have met my wits in. I need something to step in and breathe. On the, is is y'all understand what I'm saying? Is y'all tracking with me? Because so many times we are praying, but we're not inviting. We are praying and we're not inviting. We're saying, God, heal me. No, no, no. Holy Spirit, breathe into me so that I can do what you need me to do. And God, if it be your will to heal, restore, or revitalize, it will be your will. But above all, make me an instrument of what you want to do in my life and other people's life. Stop begging the Lord for stuff and start asking him to breathe on you so he can do something through you. That's what he was doing in Ezekiel. He said, speak so I can do something. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do. Speak these specific. Don't add none of your flesh in it. Speak what I tell you to say. Breathe on this. Verse 10. So I spoke as he commanded me and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. I spoke and he breathed. I cried, but in my crying, I invited him and he breathed. I doubted, but I spoke the opposite of my doubt. And in my doubting, he breathed faith into me. Too many times we speak out of a broken place saying, God, I know, I, 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 I don't know if you can do it. No, no, no. God, I've seen you do it as far back as Genesis. So do it again. Breathe into me so that I can live again. I spoke, I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I spoke, I saw, he breathed into me. I called on God, said, God, you weren't here You missed it and my brother is dead. But he spoke and then Lazarus breathed. Lazarus come forth. Joy come forth. Peace come forth. Sound mind come forth. From the four winds, I don't care where you come from, as long as it's from God, come and breathe into me joy. Come and breathe into me peace. Breathe on me. Because I believe that this can live. This, this situation that I've cried about, I believe it can live. So help me prophesy. Give me the words, God, to speak out loud, not in my mind, but out loud over the situation. God, I'm living in a dry place where it is completely dried out. I have done everything as a father. I have done everything as a mother. I've done everything as a spouse. I've done everything as a friend. God, I'm in a place where it is completely dried out. I need the wind from the four spaces. I need the breath of God to come and breathe on this. 
So give me the words. And if the words are the evidence of tongues, give them to me because I'm still going to use it. I need your spirit to breathe on me. I don't need you to do something. I don't need you to make something come out of air. I need you to breathe on me. Your breath brings peace, but your breath brings life. Mm -hmm. Your breath brings life. Y'all, I know what you're struggling with is completely dried out. I know what you are crying about is completely dried out. Your tear ducts are completely dried out. Your emotion is on the verge of being completely, your sympathy and empathy is on the verge of being completely dried out. But there is a wind that can blow on you. Hey, there is a wind that can blow in you. And that wind is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just not this thing that we sing about that sounds good. The Holy Spirit is a real living, breathing entity. He's a part of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We got the Father, the Father sent the Son, and the Son sent us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And just like a placenta, the Holy Spirit gives fruit, nutrients, gives protection. You don't need no poem. You don't need three steps. You don't need the, the skills to show me how to do. No, no, no. You need the breath of God. You don't need another seminar. You need the breath of God. You really don't even need another sermon. You need the breath of God. There is no song. There is no sermon. There is nothing I can put into a sermon and give to you that is better than the breath of God. We need the breath of God so he can teach us how to prophesy over dead things and so that we can see them live. What happened does not matter. It hurt, it shaped some of your personality. Whatever hard thing happened It does not matter because what is it going to fill you? I believe tonight, whether you're in your car or when you start it right now, what's going to fill you is going to create so much room in your heart to receive more from him. So many of us are riding on the back of our pain, the back of our shame, we're, we're crippled by these things, but we're using them as motivation. And what God wants to do is say, give me that. Matter of fact, I'll give you the language on how to speak against it. And once I give you the language, invite the Holy Spirit, invite my presence to breathe on it. One of the things me and my wife do where they're separate or together, not perfect, not consistent at all time, but one of the things we do is we will drive in places. We, we want a house, we want this, that, and third. I'll drive, I'll put the window down, and I'll speak out our name. I'll say the Williams family belongs here. There's space for the Williams family. If it be your will, God, there's space for my family out here in this neighborhood. There's space for them. I put the window down and I drive through it because it's I want my name in the wind. <laughs> I want my family's name to spread in that place. I want it to saturate that place. It's the same thing we need to do in our own houses. Open the windows, turn a fan on, I don't care what it is. It's not about blowing wind, it's about inviting wind. Yeah. Invite the wind, the presence of the Holy Spirit into every single thing. Not name it, not claim it, not speaking it. I'm not speaking something into existence. I'm doing, first of all, what God told me to do, because how stupid do I look driving around a neighborhood with the window down several times and people saying, that black SUV is back again. <laughs> but my faith is bigger than their fear. 
my faith is bigger than my embarrassment. God told me to get in my car, drive all the way to whatever this location is, put the window down and say, there's space for my family. There's space for my family. But even on, a mic, on, a, on another level is when something's going on in my house, the Lord will tell me, get up. Go breathe. Go invite me into that room. Yeah. Your son's sick. The humidifier should not be the only thing breathing in that room. Your wife is struggling. The fan shouldn't be the only thing breathing in that room. My presence should be invited at all times. Are y'all with me? I, I just really want y'all to start seeing how simple but how powerful it is when you invite the breath of God. Stop inviting your feelings and invite the breath of God. So many things in our mind are filled with our feelings rather than the breath of God, okay? The breath of God is what is going to allow you to speak on his behalf. It'll overflow from your belly. You'll start saying stuff that you'll be like, what is that? Where did that come from? How did I say that? You want to know why? Because the Holy Spirit on the inside is speaking for you. Saying, by the authority of God, I prophesy unto you today. That's what I'm saying. Don't, don't, man, I just feel like it's not making sense. And I'm trying to just, just describe it as best as possible because I want y'all to leave here with, with, with application. Do not leave here thinking that I talked about claiming something. Leave here saying, God, there's some things in my life that are close to dead. There are some things in my life that are dead. Now, God, don't bring back the stuff that made me selfish. God, don't bring back the stuff that made me important. Bring back the stuff that made you smile. If you're going to breathe life back into something, let it be stuff that pleases you. But God, I really need you to speak something new into this dry place. I need you to speak, but I can't speak on my own behalf. I have to speak on behalf of the Lord. Remember, God told Ezekiel what to say. He didn't, Ezekiel didn't tell God what to say. God, I don't like that, let's rewrite that. He spoke what was commanded of him. I spoke as he commanded me, not as my flesh influenced me. Speak as God commands. The question is not, can it live? That's the question you ask when you're in a place that is completely dried out. The question is, will your faith speak so God can move? Will your faith speak so God can move? We're going to wrap up. It's early, but I, I really want you to see what happened in this text. He really didn't do anything special except for obey. And God did the rest. He didn't do anything great. He really just repeated what he heard. My question to you is, how come you haven't repeated what you heard from God? Is it perhaps what you heard from God was convicting and challenging? That's why you didn't repeat it. God, that's kind of, that's kind of hard. That's the point. Repeat it so I can do something. When did we stop wanting to do the hard stuff? When culture got soft, that's when we stopped wanting to do the hard stuff. Yes, I said soft, call your mama, call your daddy, call them. We are in a culture, now hear me, we in a culture that's soft spiritually. 
<laughs> our, our, our culture is so soft spiritually that we can all be in the same room, hear a word and be like, nah. <laughs> I didn't like the way that word challenged me and actually I'm not coming back no more. When did we stop wanting to be challenged by the word of God that was given to us as a gift? This the gift. Or said, not only am I a sovereign God that's going to send you the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to give you a book of history to back up what I'm talking about. That's generous. <laughs> well, Pastor Lincoln, everybody, everybody's religion got a book. Yeah. They got it from here. <laughs> There's a lot of similarities in other cultures. But in this book, there's a lot of history that can correlate to it. These aren't fables. These ain't stories. These are biblical accounts. OK, Ezekiel in this. If you read the book of Ezekiel, there's parts that are just visions. <laughs> he got visions. This was one of them. OK. But he was able to pray. It was teaching him how to prophesy to dead things. There's some dead things in all of y'all lives that either need to stay dead or need God to revive. What do you need God to revive? Your devotional life, your prayer life, your wisdom, your acts. Like you need God to revive some stuff that makes sense, not goofy stuff. Come on, Antoine. Because I, I fear, oh, my goodness. I, no, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Did this message make sense tonight? Yeah. Because I, I, I don't want you to, to come to church and have an expectation of something that's light. Yeah. I want you to come to church saying, feed me because I'm hungry. But I'm only, ah, yeah, thank you, God. I'm not hungry out of starvation. I'm hungry out of I want more. Because Pastor Lincoln, you're not the only one feeding me. I'll click the Bible open as quick as possible. <laughs> This is just extra on the side of the meal I've been eating all week, okay? Wednesday should be extra, not only. Sunday should be extra, not only, okay? We need the breath of God to breathe on us. We need the breath of God to breathe on us.